Hi, um, my name is uh, Tish Ellis Aldi. I am here in Savannah, Georgia. Um, I have been painting furniture basically my whole adult life. I said this in my last two live videos. Um, but four years ago, I turned my passion into a business and it's called Saltwater and uh, Seaweed and fine finishes. I work with people here or clients here in Savannah, uh, Hilton Head and Birmingham, Alabama. Uh, it's great fun. Uh, three years ago, I think it was three years ago, I took Amy Howard's Old World Finishing course and that, um, I guess, changed the nature of my business. It was so interesting. I went from painting to really understanding uh, paint and paint products and paint processes. And it, it truly changed the trajectory of my business. I kind of um, do a lot of the old world finishing and I try to uh, provide, you know, one of a kind pieces for uh, my clients or I create them and I sell them. So that is where I am. So thank you uh, for uh, hearing about me. Um, I'm wearing my green sequins because because Savannah is St. Patrick's Day weekend and it is such a big deal here. Uh, we have a huge Irish Catholic uh, community and I think we have the like number one uh, festivities in the country. We have a big parade Saturday, even though uh, I believe St. Patrick's Day is Sunday. Uh, our fountain is flowing green. Uh, my boys are coming home tomorrow to celebrate. So it's just a huge, huge deal. And I'm so happy to be here to kind of kick off the weekend doing this live in my green sequin shirt. So uh, thanks for, for joining me. Uh, but our topic tonight is um, magazine worthy kitchens. Lux Kitchens on a Budget. Okay, so if you're watching, you probably like really enjoy design uh, like I do, or painting or DIY, and kitchens are the big thing. Like I have uh, magazines and books on kitchens galore. Um, it's like my favorite subject. So when I had the opportunity to do this, I was so excited. But um, you know, you can spend tens of thousands of dollars redoing your kitchen or uh, you can study and uh, thrift and work and learn finishes and uh, do a beautiful kitchen on, you know, just hundreds of dollars. So uh, it's not impossible. Um, my favorite kitchen and my inspiration for doing this is an artist here in Savannah, Georgia. Her name is Bellamy. And if you wanna follow her on Instagram, it's Bellamy Art, and I'm not friends with her, I'm not pushing her uh, Instagram, but I absolutely love it. Um, she does pop-up shops a couple of times a year to sell her art, and I like to go just to look at her houses. She has, I think, three different cottages, and each one, her kitchens tend to be absolutely amazing. They're small, but so much personality. So. Uh, if you have a, a moment, check her out at Spell Me Art, and when you see that she's in Savannah, you'll, you'll know what I'm talking about. But I'm going to grab my inspiration picture uh, so you can see what, um, where we're starting, or I guess what the goal was or is. Um, again, for those of you guys that are just jumping in. I'm Tish Ellis Aldi in Savannah, Georgia, and I have a fine finishing business, and I'm an artist in residence here uh, with Amy Howard. Okay, so this, oops, this is Bellamy's Kitchen. Can y'all see how gorgeous it is? It's not big, it's small, but she has mastered the, um, what is it, the combination of bright and airy, yet she has created some warmth with that wooden island and that amazing um, lantern. Okay, that lantern, I just, I love it. Uh, she, you know, being an artist, I'm sure she has done a lot of the finishes on her own, but yet she invested in probably a pretty pricey uh, stove, oven, 
over there at the end. Uh, she created a beautiful hood. Um, she doesn't have any upper shelving really. Uh, those, the sink that she has, I do know that she picked up at maybe a yard sale or out of an old house at Tybee, the beach here in Savannah. Um, and those doors at the end uh, where she's showcasing her collections, uh, she stripped and had the cabinets built around those. So a stunning kitchen, very small, uh, but a mix of textures uh, that creates just a beautiful ambiance. So that was the goal uh, for my little uh, space. Let me show you where I started. Oh, there, whoops. There's that lantern, isn't it gorgeous? Okay. And this is where I started. Orange oak cabinets with a microwave above the stove. There we go. There we go. There we go. So you see where I started. Um, my husband and I, we bought this house I, I, around 13 years ago and it came with a lovely pool and this guest house which um, the previous owners used for a pet house. <laughs> so when we bought it we had to pretty much, you know, got a new floors and uh, kind of clean the walls, remove the ceiling, replace. Uh, we replaced the appliances, uh, but we stopped there. We left, you know, the orange cabinets, which were in good order. And um, we said one day we'll get to that, but it was such an ordeal to, it's a two bedroom, one bath. It has a little sitting air, living room over there and this kitchen. So this is the only part that has not been addressed. So being an artist in residence uh, with Amy, when I had the opportunity to do this, it was just, the perfect opportunity. So um, I'm going to start out by uh, sharing with you, you know, the products that I've used and then we'll go from there because this is a two or three part tutorial, very simple and um, I don't want to do too much on one subject. We'll just keep moving. So, um, but first I want to share the products. Um, so those orange cabinets, I painted with Amy Howard's Miracle Paint in the Ballet White. It was very simple. Um, I will show you how I applied, but um, I used two coats because they are very grainy. It was not necessary. I probably could have gotten away with one, but I had the time and I had plenty of paint, so I did two coats. It took one can and maybe a little bit of a second one to do all of these cabinets. Yes, it is a small area, but this is also a very small can. So it has great coverage. Um, it's, uh, <clears throat> uh, it's easy to work with. Um, it's very forgiving. I had a couple of drips that I sanded, but it was very good. So I'm happy, very, very happy with how this turned out. Um, the next, uh, my lanterns. Okay, as you can see, you saw my, what I started out with, right? Okay, and I created these beauties. I think they're, they're beautiful. Um, the gold leaf up there. I may have to turn it off so you can like truly get the full effect, but they turned out amazingly well. And, uh, for the lanterns, I used Amy Howard's, um, it's Noir, uh, One Step Black, uh-oh, I was just using it. Um, anyway, the One Step Black on that. Um, and then I used the Amy Howard uh, Noir Milk Paint as well and some Gold Leaf. And for the third, tutorial I used uh, back here some common board to create warmth and I used the Amy Howard gel stain so uh, let me kind of give you a peek of the whole kitchen so you can see where we are okay the lantern whoops the lantern at this end so I had two 
I'm hoping you can see both. I don't know. Um, two. We did the marble countertops. And I did, again, the common board with the gel stain. I want to kind of move up here to, this is like my prize. I love this. This is a bass, you know, how people used to um, catch those and in tournaments and have them mounted. I found one at Habitat <laughs> and my boys are big shark fishermen or fish, they love to fish. So I lacquered it with the Amy Howard uh, primer, uh, what is the white perfection and the lacquer top coat. And I thought it was so cute. Anyway, only in Savannah and when you have fishermen boys. Uh, but I think that's my masterpiece. Um, it's things like that that make a kitchen though, you know, um, it gives it personality and beauty. So, okay, and here's this little section. Again, you can see the, the white, the lantern, the marble, and the, I'm hoping you can see this, and the warmth. So let's get started. Hey, Janet. Oh my goodness. Hello. I just happened. It's hard for me to see without my glasses. Hello. Thank you so much. Um, okay, so let's get started. I want to show you how easy it is to use the um, Miracle Paint. Um, and again, I used the Ballet White, so it gave me that really, oh, see, you can see that, that really crisp, clean white that uh, goes very well with the marble. And again, that uh, common board, the warmth of the common board. So don't look too closely. I do have some finishing touches to make. Um, but here we go. Here is, I'm gonna turn this down so you can see. So this is my very orange cabinet and make sure that you clean very well with clean slate beforehand so that you can remove the finish so the paint has something to adhere to. And I've already done all of this for the sake of time. Um, so just make sure you, you do clean it well so that it does stick and you have the finish that you're you know, working so hard to get. If you skip the step, you, you might have a little problem. So please, please don't forget to clean. Okay. So. I've already poured it. I'm just gonna go over like this. See how well it's going on. And again, I'm a light painter. I like to do a couple of coats. Um, okay with doing a couple of coats. I'm not always trying to get it done in one swoop because I know I make mistakes. I like to sand and go back. So, but look, for this orange cabinet, this goes on so smoothly. Okay, I feel like we need to have music. Um, okay, it goes on so smoothly. There we go. I'm really not going to paint the whole thing because you get the idea. You can see with that middle piece how well it goes on and how easy it is. You know, this is what I did to each cabinet, and then I went back with a paintbrush and filled in the middle. And again, like I said, I do a light coat. Because I don't want to have drips. So, there we go. Anyway, so I am not going to spend a lot of time on this part because you all can paint, but I just wanted you to get a picture of how easy this was. Again, I just used barely over 
you know, one can to do all of this. Um, I did the side that you can see and the whole other side and plus I've painted other, you know, like a little tray and other small pieces so it goes a long way. Um, but you know, I'll see with one swoop and uh, the grain. What I'm happy about with this paint is that somehow it fills the grain. It levels well and it fills that grain. Um, so that's not real obvious. You don't have to use the putty that you know people recommend when you're painting oak cabinets. So there we go. That's our first little finish. Okay, and then okay, we're gonna move on to my favorite, which was my lantern. That was like the funnest part. Um, so. Here we go. You see the ones that have already hung. Um, I started with the black one-step milk paint and I went ahead and painted this for the sake of time. Um, it has dried. I used a dryer to dry it. So, and I'm only gonna do this top part, okay? I'm not gonna do the bottom like I did with the uh, lanterns that are already hanging. But you can see I cleaned it with a uh, clean slate. I painted it with Noir uh, one-step paint. I have used the uh, sizing, the Amy Howard. Um, let me show you. Gilding size, because I don't know if you noticed at the top of my lantern, I did um, use gold leaf. It gave that extra pop. Um, so here we go. Again, this is the One Step Noir after cleaning it with Clean Slate. So I have a, and I didn't go for, you know, like a really heavy coverage. I just wanted enough that the milk paint would adhere and um, and I could just, just work from there because I, I like to be able to wipe it off and, and kind of work with it. So we're gonna move on to the milk paint. And again, for the sake of time, I've already pre-mixed this. But what I did is I, I took three uh, tablespoons of the Noir milk paint and I used uh, two tablespoons of warm water. Uh, typically, I think the recommendation is to use uh, one, you know, one part water to one part milk paint, but I like mine a little bit thicker so I can kind of work with it. So that's what I did. You just have to, you know, find your happy medium, but that's what works for me. So um, here we go. I'm gonna stir it up. I may need to even add a little bit of water, but I'm just going to, can y'all see? Okay. Just go over it. Yeah. to take my dryer and just kind of start drying it a little bit. So it went on, it looks black, um, but as it dries, it'll give you the same uh, finish that I have you know, on my lanterns, kind of that gray wash look. So here we go. So you can, I just want you to see how it dries. So if you're using the black milk paint, it will dry much lighter. So don't be alarmed. That's the look that we're going for. Okay. There we go. So while this is kind of drying, I'm gonna go ahead and put the gold leaf on and then we'll go back to uh, finish drying it. So I have the Amy Howard gold leaf, which is great stuff. I love it, love it, love it, love it. Okay, so 
so again I had um, put the size on before the show uh, just for uh, out of respect for time and everybody has their own way of applying gold leaf okay I just do it and I'm always happy with my results you can always work with it change it correct it but don't be intimidated to use it as wonderful so there we go I'm gonna use another piece can y'all see this I hope so let me see okay there we go sorry guys another one where I missed Again, one of those moments I feel like we need music. Too much silence. Okay. Okay, I just like to kind of touch it and let it sit. Um, and I am going to continue drying. but it's drying to this wonderful gray. Okay. Oh, love it. Okay. And can you see that? So see that gray? And then what I did is I just kind of took some water. I did not use... Um, Oftentimes, I'll use antiquing glaze to remove uh, some of this milk paint, but I just kind of just started working it, you know, just wherever. And I actually, on those lanterns, took quite a bit off in the middle, like it had been worn, you know, the... sun had been shining on it or the weather the elements had roughed it up and that is what I I did um, and, you know in projects like this I, I so enjoy sharing um, with you in a lab like this but it's one of those um, things that you just kind of keep working it. You know, um, with those lanterns, they would dry and I would go back and kind of, you know, scrape some off and dab again with the milk paint, uh, possibly, you know, places that I had missed and then wipe until I got the finish that I was looking for. And you may be working with your milk paint on a lantern and you may, you know, want more wear and tear here. I got the finish that I was looking for, but basically this is this is the process. The one-step paint first, the milk paint, and then you work it to your liking. And as it dries, uh, we'll put the wax, we'll apply the wax, you know, for protection. And um, I will show you something that Mary Corrado shared uh, on a video to this is so garish, so bright and gold. Um, we want to tone that down. So she used the um, gel stain to tone down the gold on a table that she had refinished. Uh, and I thought, oh, that is such a wonderful idea because sometimes you don't want such a bright gold. And this is a very simple way uh, to, you know, whoops, to just tone it down. So here we go. I'm going to kind of dust it all off. 
Thank you guys for being with me tonight. This is so fun. Like I said, kitchens are my favorite subject, so I'm so glad to um, have people here to share it with. Okay. And see it, I don't even mind that there's gold leaf down here. Um, to me, that looks good. Imperfection is good for me. I like that. I'm so okay with imperfection. So let's just touch it up. Um, see, and we can just keep working. So all of those are showing. Yes, yeah, so pretty, so pretty. Okay, we're gonna take the gel stain, just dab it on the napkin, and I'm gonna wipe some off on my notebook and start rubbing it on, and it just tones down that gold. I'm hoping you can see the effect. It really does kind of antique the gold and you can you can add as much as you like or as little as you like depending on your preference for your gold. Um, some people love the bling and that's fine. I just like to tone it down just a tad. Um, so here we are. And what we would do next is, can y'all see this? See, on this one I didn't take quite as much off as I did um, on the one hanging, but I'm okay, I like, I like this. I like the way that looks and the way it feels too. So I'm going to apply some wax. We are using the Amy Howard Light Antique Wax. And I'm going to wipe it on my notebook here and just start touching it up. And you know, my main purpose here is to show you that you can paint these paint lanterns. You know, you'll see you see them all the time at the Goodwill and the thrift store or Habitat for Humanity. Our Habitat for Humanity has a whole section of like those bright brass, you know, um, or brushed bronze, whatever it may be. A whole section of chandeliers and you know um, lanterns like this, just in finishes that aren't in style that you can change. Um, it's not hard, you just have to try. So I'm hoping that you'll get the idea that you can use any milk paint color, I mean, excuse me, any one-step color, milk paint, and create a finish that you like. And if you're not using um, these right out, you know, outside, I think they're fine. Um, you can use in a covered porch, um, a hallway, but again, I like to use lanterns inside in my home. So, I hope you can see that. But a fun finish. And again, just try it. You may want to use uh, uh, a good man is hard to find and you know a different uh, color of milk paint, but you can do anything. That's, that's my point with kitchens or with this whole process is you can do anything. It just takes a little bit of creativity and um, elbow grease. So um, that's my, my lantern tutorial. I hope you liked that. 
And the next is, like I said, um, in order to save money, I chose not to, you know, do that marble backsplash. And it wasn't just to save money, it was mixing the materials. I, you know, I like that I have this bright white, the, mir uh, the miracle paint and the ballet white. I've got the marble and the ballet white, white on the wall. So in order to uh, create some warmth, the common board. And um, all I did, the first piece I used a brush and it, I was a little heavy handed. So the second time I just took paper towel and dabbed it off and wiped. Dab, wipe. Can y'all see? Oh, sorry guys. So, and I'm using the Auburn Mahogany. So I just kind of, now I'm fully using it. I'm not dabbing it off. So, you see that warm, this is pine. And it actually looks whiter to you guys than it does in person. It's a little bit darker. So here we are. There we go. So that is my little backsplash for against my marble. Um, and very inexpensive. So basically, uh, I hope the point that I'm making is, again, kitchens can be cost tens of thousands of dollars, but you can also, by just being creative with those sconces, I um, pulled one up, I think it was Charles Edwards, and that's kind of where I got uh, the inspiration for this finish. Those can go for, you know, eight to ten thousand dollars per light fixture. So you can, you know, study the fixtures and um, kind of figure out the color scheme and create your own for twenty five dollars. Um, so, you know, don't be scared to try. Uh, take some of these courses, fo uh, follow, uh, watch these videos that the artist in residence uh, provide. Um, it's very interesting. You, you know, some of these women are, most of these women are very, um, successful in their fields and they are doing these videos, you know, two times a week and they're doing them for free. And, and so if you are, you know, look at Skillshare or Masterclass, you have to pay for that, but you have these very talented women um, that are sharing their secrets uh, for free. So, you know, take advantage because you can create a beautiful space um, with some of these ideas. Uh, but in, uh, anyway, I'll get off my soapbox. Let me just kind of give you an overview of my finished project. Um, I'm very happy with it. Um, I think I got the Bellamy look that I was going for. So, oops, I have that basket up there. Oh, why didn't I take that down? Uh, but here we are. I've got my lacquered fish, my new hood, and I'm still working on this finish. I didn't get it uh, finished for tonight. Uh, my lanterns. Again, my lantern, so proud of it. And that bright ballet white. I just am so happy with that color. So um, thank you all for joining me uh, this evening. It was so much fun. This whole project was great fun. And I encourage you um, to, you know, try something. It uh, just takes a little bit of work, but you can create uh, a wonderful space uh, by just being creative. So again, thanks for joining me. Y'all have a great weekend and um, I'll see you next time. Thank you.